Cannoli, of course, are Sicilian cylinders of fried dough filled with stuff, usually sweetened ricotta. My wife Lauren loves cannoli, and finally, we figured out a practical way of making them at home. Just do them like little fried discs, like little cookies. For a fancy pass-around dessert for a cocktail party or something, you could do a lot worse. For the pastry, Lauren's going to start with one cup of flour in a pile. That's 120 grams all-purpose, a tablespoon of sugar, small pinch of salt, like a quarter teaspoon. Into that pile, she will cut just one tablespoon of cold butter. This is normally a pretty lean pastry, otherwise it just doesn't hold its shape in the oil. You can do this in a food processor, of course, but it's super easy to just chop through the butter with a knife until the butter essentially disappears, or you just see fine little crumbs. Tiny bits of butter are what make pastries crumbly or flaky. One egg, and we're only going to need the yolk. You could use the whole egg, but the pastry wouldn't be as tender. Lauren's doing the well method, yolk into the little well, and then just enough cold water type liquid to bring this together. I swear white wine is traditional, or more likely a fortified wine, but plain water would work. Splash on a little bit at a time because you only want just enough liquid to bring this into a shaggy dough. Believe it or not, that is good. Throw it into a thing and let it rest in the fridge for at least 15 minutes or so to hydrate. Time to make the filling. It's just a cup of ricotta cheese, ideally the full fat kind. You could strain off some of the whey if you prefer a stiffer texture. Then you literally just stir in as much powdered sugar as you want. Make it a little too sweet because it needs to sweeten the pastry a bit too. We did a quarter cup plus a little splash of vanilla and that's good for us, but people put in lemon zest, spices, all kinds of things. Go nuts. Since we're doing flat rounds, we can just shallow fry these. All we need is like a centimeter of oil in there, max, get it heating. Some more flour on our board there, and then our dough has hydrated, so it's ready to roll out flat. Roll it a little and then turn it. Roll it a little and then turn it. That's a very reliable way to roll out pastry. You make sure that nothing sticks and you roll it out evenly. By keeping our dough cold, the butter chunks should hold together and striate slightly as we roll, and that's how you get flakes. Get it as thin as you reasonably can, any thinner, and this will start to break apart. Now Lauren is using a small juice glass to punch out rounds. Punch and twist, punch and twist. Rounds may seem wasteful, but most other shapes would probably curl in the oil and then they'd be hard to fry evenly in such a shallow pan. You could gather up the scrap and roll it out again, but that dough will never be as tender as the first roll. We're using a little scrap to test the oil. That's not nearly hot enough yet, you can see. We want to see it bubbling aggressively, especially because the temperature is going to plummet when we drop a whole layer of rounds in. That's still not quite hot enough. A couple of skewers are great for flipping these over safely. They just need a minute or two. Fry until dark golden and rigid. They'll get more rigid as they cool on the rack, but these we underfry a little. The second batch came out a lot crispier, but I think you could go even darker. Lauren is loading up the cream in a little Ziploc bag, which she'll snip in the corner to improvise a little piping bag. She's not doing this to make it look super nice. These are not going to look that nice. She just thought that piping would be faster and cleaner, but you could just smear on some cheese with a little butter knife. As with any cannolo, don't fill it until you're ready to eat, otherwise the pastry goes soggy. And if you top with chocolate chips, we definitely recommend the mini chocolate chocolate chips. The big ones are just overwhelming on something so small and delicate. Really quick and easy and surprisingly fancy. Hey, fun fact, cannoli are a plot point in Lauren's seventh novel, which is out today. Sister of the Bride, her first entry in the adult romance category. Sister of the Bride is a rom-com retelling of the movie Father of the Bride. Pippin runs her family's old Italian restaurant in Boston, and she's tasked with planning her twin sister's surprise wedding. All the while, she's trying to not fall in love with her childhood best friend. Apparently my three-day lasagna also makes an appearance in the book. Really help her out if you bought a copy, though note real quick, she used to write in the young adult category if you bought any of her books before. This is her first foray into the adult romance category, which is a different thing. It does get a little bit uh, spicy, I believe is what they say. Sister of the Bride by Lauren Morrill is out today worldwide, and Kindle Unlimited subscribers can download it for free as part of their subscription. You can also purchase an e-copy exclusively from Amazon or a paperback wherever you like to buy books. There's links in the description. Go Lauren!